It's time to take a short break from all of the Apple content I've been posting on the channel, but uh, don't worry Apple fans, there's plenty more to come. Today though, I want to talk PC. About six years ago, I built myself a gaming PC. Uh, it was orange. I was going through an orange phase, but anyway, when I later bought a 12 core Mac Pro 5.1, which had an Nvidia Titan X GPU in it, I found that I started using that for gaming instead. I had a dedicated Windows bootcamp drive and I started to not use my gaming PC, so I decided to sell it. And then a little bit later, Nvidia and Apple started their petty squabble about drivers, and so I decided that the time had come to sell the cheese grater Mac Pro as well. And since then, I've been wanting to build another gaming PC, specifically an all AMD gaming PC. Not because I've got anything against Intel or Nvidia, I just wanted to try out the alternative. So this video is about the build and my thoughts on it, and it's going to be in two parts. So in this first part, we'll talk about the build itself and the components that I chose. And in part two, we'll do the obligatory benchmarks and record some gaming. So let's get started. Uh, now this computer is actually um, making a little bit of noise, which is going to get picked up by the microphone. So I'm just going to shut it down and I'm going to take the, the glass front off as well so we can see inside. So let's just do that. My plans for this gaming PC were originally much grander. Uh, but then we found ourselves in uncertain financial times due to the pandemic, so I thought it would be wise to just scale back the grand designs a bit. My two sons, age 14 and 12, had been saving up their money, and we decided to go in as equal partners and do the build together. So let me run through the component choices that we made and the prices. We decided to set ourselves a budget of £1,000, and we didn't quite come in under that budget, but uh, sometimes it just doesn't make sense to compromise on components. You should always buy the best quality that you can afford. A uh, cheap, low quality kit is always a false economy. I've built a large number of PCs over the past 20 plus years, but I'm not actively doing that now. And things have moved on fast, so I found that I had to do quite a bit of research before building this one. And no doubt there are things that I could have done better. Let's have a look at the components, starting with the case. So I chose this Fractal Design Meshify C Mini for £85. And I should just say that I'm quoting UK retail prices throughout, which includes our 20% sales tax. I'll do conversions to dollars at today's exchange rates, but you'll no doubt find that there's some variation in your local pricing. I've used Fractal Design previously for builds, so I've always been happy with the quality. And I thought that this particular case had an interesting look to the front of it. Uh, quite understated and stylish in my opinion. And it's got the glass side panel so that you can see all the good stuff inside. And it also has an open top uh, which is covered by this sort of uh, removable magnetic grill. So the hot air can vent through the top of the case. And the fans are reasonably quiet. Uh, the side panel is nothing more than a, a sheet of glass and it's held on by four thumb screws. It's a bit fiddly to remove but I do like the aesthetic that it gives. Now, I think choosing a good case is really important. It shouldn't be an afterthought because you're gonna spend a lot of time looking at this thing. So you need to make some sensible choices. Uh, you wouldn't wanna get it in some garish color, for example, that doesn't fit with any of your home decor. Uh, the next choice for me is always the CPU. And I wanted to go with the Ryzen 9 3000 series, but that added quite a bit of cost to the build. Uh, not just the CPU itself, but then the motherboard as well and the RAM and it just wasn't possible within our budget. So instead, we decided to go for the Ryzen 7 2700X. This is an eight core CPU with plenty of performance for modern games, and I thought at 180 pounds, it represented great value. When it comes to cooling the CPU, we decided to just stick with the stock AMD cooler that came with it. Uh, I wanted to water cool this build, but again, that just wasn't possible within the budget that we had available. Choosing the right motherboard can make a big difference to a build, so I went with a brand that I've had good experience with in the past, MSI. And specifically, we opted for the B450M Mortar Max board at £90. A key requirement for me was for the board to have a Type-C USB port, and this board does have that. Um, it's only got one PCI Express 3 X16 slot though, but as I only anticipate using one GPU, I think that's fine and it's got an M2 slot running at the same speed. 
There are four USB 3 Type A ports and then two 3.1 spec ports. One is a Type A and one is that Type C. So it's got the things that we needed for this build. I'd have liked to have spent more on the motherboard, but really this one is fine and it's not so expensive that we couldn't consider upgrading it later. For the RAM, we selected Crucial's Ballistics RGB series. Uh, this is DDR4 3200, and we got a match pair of eight gigabyte DIMMs for 83 pounds, giving us a total of 16 gigs of RAM. But since then, I've bought another two identical DIMMs, uh, not because we needed them so much as the empty slots just annoyed me. So now we've got four sticks and 32 gigs of RAM in the system. The RGB lighting can be customized using the MSI motherboard application. So you can sync it with the board lighting and the CPU lighting, or you can have a craptacular neon party going on in the case. I wanted to try an AMD GPU as I mentioned in the intro, and since I've had good experiences with the Sapphire RX 5700 XT Nitro Plus card, I chose one of those. Uh, I use one of these cards in my eGPU with my MacBook Pro and my 2013 Mac Pro. Um, so I thought it would make for some interesting comparisons if I put the same card in this machine. It's worth pointing out that this PC is going to be plugged into a 40-inch 1080p TV that runs at 60 hertz. So the 5700 XT is more than powerful enough to drive demanding games at 1080p and 60 frames per second. I don't play first-person shooters. I'm not looking for every possible millisecond of response time. So this card is absolutely fine for this build. And I know there are plenty of PC gamers out there who insist on having the latest and greatest from Nvidia but I'm building a machine to work with the games that my boys and I play and the equipment that we've got already. And I hate to keep coming back to the budget, but we had a budget to stick to. This card was 419 pounds. Now, yes, you can get cheaper 5700 XTs, but I wanted to stick with what I knew. And next we come to the power supply. A good PSU is absolutely critical for a reliable computer, but it's something that often gets skimped on. You really shouldn't do that. First of all, calculate the wattage that you'll need. There are lots of online calculator tools available and work out what you need, but spec your PSU with a little bit of headroom. I'd always go for a power supply from a known brand that is at least 80 plus gold certified. And if you want neat cabling, then it really needs to be fully modular. So with that in mind, we chose the Corsair RM650. It's 80 plus gold rated and it's got 650 watts. Uh, plus it has fan control, so most of the time the fan doesn't spin and that helps to keep the noise down. At 89 pounds and with a design life of 100,000 hours, I think it's a pretty good solution. Naturally, we needed a fast SSD with a decent amount of storage, so a Samsung 970 Evo one terabyte seemed like the way to go. Uh, these are great drives and at 170 pounds, sort of manageable for our budget. And finally, I wanted to have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality in the machine. Now at the time of building the PC, I hadn't sorted out the wired network in the gaming room that it was gonna live in. Uh, so this was a bit of a stopgap solution, but it's a useful thing to have. I didn't wanna spend loads of money on this. So this is one area that we did go cheap with the Zaya 2 odd. I'm sure that's not how you say it, uh, but it's a card with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5 on it. I've actually been pleasantly surprised with this card. It works fine. The Wi-Fi card seems to pick up the signal really well and it fits neatly in the PCI slot at the bottom of the motherboard. And the board itself is black so it fits in with the overall aesthetic of the build. The Bluetooth on the card is powered by an internal motherboard USB header and they supply a cable but it's not particularly long so that's something you might want to bear in mind if you go for one of these. The price though, just £30, really good value. And so the total cost of our build came in at £1,146, which is a bit over our budget, but I just wouldn't have been happy compromising any more than we already did. I had a one terabyte spinning hard disk lying around, which I popped in for backup storage. And as I mentioned previously, I bought additional RAM since building the system. So it's probably more like £1,250 to build what we've got here. But I think that's a pretty reasonable result. Naturally, you've got to add in the cost of your Windows license if you don't already have it, uh, not to mention keyboard, mouse, and monitor. The build itself was pretty straightforward. I was able to do it with the boys and explain things as we went along, and they did a great job, as you can see. It was a fun project for us to do together. And getting a nice, neat result was actually pretty easy with this fractal design case, and there weren't any major challenges that I remember. 
And how does the machine perform? Well, I'll show you a bit more in part two, but for the most part, I'm happy with the performance. I did find that uh, the machine was running very hot. Well, that is to say the case was getting hot uh, on the back here, roughly where the CPU sits. And actually at times it got almost uncomfortable to touch. And I just put it down to poor thermal design because the machine was actually running fine. But I probably should have paid more attention because the CPU temperature wasn't reporting as being crazy hot. So clearly something else was going on. And I should have thought about that a little bit more carefully. When I came to upgrade the RAM, I noticed that it was clocked in at 2667 megahertz, and it should be 3200. So I went back into the BIOS, enabled XMP support, and then entered the correct RAM timings. So this is completely my fault, by the way. I should have done that when I was setting the computer up. Uh, but anyway, after doing that, that sorted the RAM frequency out. Uh, it's now correctly at 3200, but it also seemed to stop the overheating. I've got no idea whether the two things are actually connected or if it was just some fluke, but uh, perhaps some of you out there know and could advise in the comments. In any case, the additional RAM running at the correct frequency boosted the performance a little bit, according to the benchmarks anyway. In Geekbench 5, this machine scores 1115 for single core and 7860 for multi-core. And that puts it just ahead of the 12 core Xeon in my 2013 Mac Pro for multi-threaded performance and I'm perfectly happy with that. It's a snappy, responsive system, and it's happy running the games that we like to play on high settings. I do get the sense that AMD GPU drivers are not as mature as Nvidia's, and I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's, it's just I get the impression that it's not quite as good in some small way, uh, and perhaps that's some kind of subliminal bias or, or a real thing, I don't know. I do feel that the performance, the quality, and the overall build aesthetic that we've got here represents good value for the amount that we paid. The components work well together, and they made for an easy build. And I'm happy that this machine will see us all right for a few years yet. In part two, I want to show you some examples of the gaming performance. I want to run some benchmarks and also demonstrate some real-world video editing performance in DaVinci Resolve. I think that'll be quite interesting, and I can compare it with the same GPU in uh, an external GPU enclosure on my Mac. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this Technicolor journey into the world of mid-budget all AMD gaming rigs. And if you'd like to snag any of these components for yourself, I'll try and include as many Amazon links as I can in the description. The channel makes a small commission from those, uh, which was all going into the fighting fund to buy new gear to feature on the channel. Uh, maybe you could support the channel by just one click of the subscribe button. I do really appreciate all of your support. And maybe I did enough to earn a thumbs up, or a thumbs down if that's your thing. But in any case, I'll see you next time for some more Geekery.